Jill wanted a, uh, really, a new garage. I thought it'd be nice if I could use it as a secondary area as well and, and keep papers and books and things in a dry, secure area. You can't just finish the garage like this. It's going to fall apart. Wow, you feel how shaky this is? Oh, my God. I have never in many years had to pull off a brand new shingle roof before. This smell good. Did they actually do this way? No. Yeah, they did it. Not liars. You want a good job at GM Shake? I can't contact her. I'm accessible. Thank you. God, I love my job. <laughs> Well, it was a, an old garage with uh, wooden sides, and it was rather charming. An apple tree was in the middle of the garage, but about two years ago, the tree died of old age. And then, of course, I had a leaky garage, and I thought it's time to get a functioning garage. Hello, Jill. How are you today? Hey, nice to see you. <laughs> so this is the uh, wonderful garage you had done, eh? Well, I spoke to four or five contractors and got different prices and um, some didn't show up or some didn't seem to want to do the job and some quotes seemed quite low that didn't seem realistic and some were quite high. And in the end, I decided on the fellow I used uh, because he'd done a couple of little jobs for me. Uh, he was referred by somebody in the neighborhood who runs a business and said he was competent. She hired this guy to come in. He did a little bit of work inside the house and uh, seemed to be good at what he did. Gave her a good quote, $17,000 to rebuild her garage. OK, and what was his plan? What was he going to give you for $17,000? Uh, well, the new windows, new roof, new walls, uh, new doors. The whole kit and caboodle. Yeah. Oh, yeah, proper okay. garage. No. Well, I can see that it's on an unlevel angle, which, which tells me okay. originally this had dropped. Uh, what did he plan to do with the outside here? Well, you can see he put these sort of bits of wood here, kind of patched it up like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, well, that's a good term. It is a jigsaw puzzle here. That's where there was the original apple tree that went through the side of the garage and up through the roof. If you peek through there, you see there's a big oh, stump. Oh, there's a huge stump there. It's right yeah. on the foundation. I guess that's what's holding the wall up. The roof line was weird and was not straight in one direction or the other. And the roof itself was wavy. Well, she called the contractor back in and said, you know, I got a wavy roof here. What are you going to do about the outside? And he tried to convince her that, oh, don't worry, the side will cover the outside. And, uh, the wavy roof excuses, obviously, excuses. OK, uh, what's with the plastic, may I ask? Oh, well, because, as you see, if you look around everywhere, there's huge holes. So a friend kindly suggested, why don't I just put the heavy vapor barrier around everything? And just to keep the critters out. Yeah, and to keep the rain and the snow and everything out just temporarily. A couple of men were working, not the, um, the contractor himself, a couple of men were working on the garage. And when we went inside and saw the work, and my friend said, this is just not satisfactory. It's not safe. He said, oh, I, uh, I'm just doing what I was told. So I said, all right, I understand. Uh, I'm supposed to be speaking with your boss. And uh, he got a bit huffy and grabbed his tools and stormed off. And uh, the contractor told me he was down at City Hall and he would see me at 5.30, but he never showed up. I think through asking him more questions about, you know, things being wrong uh, and more excuses, the contractor finally turned around and said, well, OK, we're leaving. This is no good. This is not how you do a garage. It sounds like he was trying to come in, make a quick buck. Obviously, he wasn't going to do it because you jumped on him and said, I don't like this, I don't like this. And let me guess, he ran. Very nice. Now, please tell me you did not pay this man in full. Uh, no. The one good thing is I paid one third down to start. It was a third halfway through and a third at the end. I think the check was 5400 which was the first one. And, and I had given him, I think, that day or the day before, another one for 5400 because the work was in progress, which my friend said stop payment immediately on that. So when he went to cash it, of course, it was stopped. Yeah, I believe this contractor should maybe stick to building garden sheds and stay away from garages or anything that he does not know about. Did he get a permit? No. Obviously not, because this would never pass. No permit. Did you ask about a permit? Yes. Twice before I signed the contract and afterwards. And when the day it all fell apart, he said he was down at City Hall. 
So he lied to you? Well, maybe he was at City Hall, but there was no per permit ever produced. He was meeting his girlfriend. This is a shame. He knew to do it properly. He would have to go to zoning. He would have to go to committee of adjustments. He'd have to go to the permits department. And that would take four or five months. Whereas instead, he got cash on the barrel. And if he could done the job, got in, got out, he would have had the money right away. He tried to do a leveled wall. And on the rafters is where he cut a bird's mouth, which sits on top. It's called a bird's mouth. And that rafter will sit on top of the top plate. He is consistently different sizes on his rafters, on his bird's mouth. So I see right up a difference of an inch and a quarter. So that would make your roof go just like this, down again and back up on that side. I have to take this all down. We're going to... Uh, no way to... Nope, and we gotta pull out that stump. We're gonna have to bring in a tractor, do a four foot deep foundation. We are really gonna take this down and we are going to make a mess, but uh, at the end of it, we are going to make a piece of beauty here. Okay? okay, all right. Let me go get a lot of people. This is not gonna be easy. This really does frustrate me. This is just so, so wrong. I didn't realize that really a garage is is like building a little house. This is uh, honestly a big job. We're going to take it all down. Unfortunately, we're trying to scavenge some of the wood for forming, so we just don't waste it. We're going to have to pull out the concrete pad, excavate four feet deep all the way around. Once we dig this hole, it's going to be a lot of earth. So I'm going to take over the back lawn. We're going to lose a lot of everything that's here. It's just got to go. Take the fences down. Yeah. We called in all the right people to check out the property, make sure there was no gas, cable, anything like that in the ground. Everything's clear, so we can go ahead and take this down and get going on the new structure. We have some, what the hell is that? That's a, uh, some sort of mushroom. Oh my God. Oh, critters. Well, at least someone's eating it. Here we're right on earth, okay? So he, all he's done is put a stud right down earth and actually it's right off the ground. It's not on anything. There's a stump. So we have no bottom plate at all on this wall. So what we have is vertical studs sitting right on the earth. And all it's going to do is sink. He just ran a piece of, not, this is an eighth inch board right here. So the old siding, a small board, a small angle piece, a piece of, a piece of mahogany panel. Look at this piecing. Like, how are you going to cover this? This no good. This no good. This is a $35,000 job for 17 grand. You can't do it. It has to come down and redone. See, I can see that corner dropping from here. So since he's done the work, it's already dropping. He had the roof off. He could have done all kinds of changes to this. He's just really deceiving the person who owns the house. That's what he's doing. The code, if you're going to make these changes, you've got to take it down and put in a four-foot footing. Oh, these windows, they're beautiful yeah. windows. I mean, casement, vinyl casement, maintenance free. We're going to use these again, absolutely, no doubt about it. Wow, you feel how shaky this is? Oh my God. Oh, this is really flimsy, but it's not gonna fall down. We still have the collar ties in place. I would not be standing up here if this was a danger zone. I have never in many years had to pull off a brand new shingle roof before. Oh, this is brand new. Yeah, this is, what, not even a year old. And we're pulling it off and it's going to the junkyard. We got plywood, different thicknesses. We have OSB, OSB. It's as if he uh, brought all the spare wood in his backyard and put it in here. That's only 3 8 plywood, not good enough. Has to be 5 8 by code. Has to be 5 8 It's gonna be a gorgeous garage when we're done. Beauteous Maximus. Okay, everything can be done from the ground. Uh, we're gonna keep all the collar ties, that's for sure. Pieces like this, this is scrap, I can't reuse it. The two by fours we can reuse. Not in, maybe in this case, we'll use it for braces, for forming. Uh, everything else will be new here.
No bottom plate, right? Tied into nothing. Just dirt. Not doing to do anything. This is just going to cave in. That's a nice piece of wood. The garage is down. Two and a half hours. I don't like it. It was a well-built garage. Nice and thin. Oh, we're just going to pull up the rest of the concrete here, break it up, and get it ready to go. We have a truck coming this afternoon for this garbage. We'll have a separate truck for the concrete. We want to keep it separate. Tomorrow morning, we have the surveyor coming in. We start digging. If we put the points right on the four corners, your excavator will just take them out. You won't have anything to check exactly. Day five, looks like we're making a swimming pool. Yeah, I believe this contractor should maybe stick to building garden sheds and stay away from garages or anything that he does not know about. Not bad for two and a half hours. Steak, steak, steak. You know, 20 inches wide, whatever your bucket's going to do, down to the four-foot frost line. Day two, one hell of a mess. Uh, we're trying to get the uh, foundation forming in today. You know, there's not much room for error. We try very hard to get it done as fast as possible, but properly. You think the other guy was going to do this for $17,000? I don't think so. This is the way it should have been done. He wasn't going to call in tractors. He wasn't going to get a permit. His idea was to get the money quick, get the job done, and get the hell out of here the wrong way. This is a big damn hole. We are actually putting out the rope on the stakes to give us the form. We got to set up for the form. The truck will be here at 11 a.m. This is the code. This is what you should be doing when you're building a new garage. You have to go down four feet. You have to have footings. You have to have a foundation wall right from the beginning. If we have everything perfect on the forming, everything follows suit. If we are unlevel on the forming, then we're gonna be unlevel for the uh, foundation wall. Then we have to re, you know, rejig the uh, structure to, to create level. So let's just do it right from the beginning. We have a really good strong footing here. And what we want in the footing is twice the thickness of the foundation wall. We're uh, just over six inches deep, so we're you know, actually overcoating. I like it that way. We're going to let this sit a minute, and then we're going to do a, a key notch within this where the wall will sit on top, and that helps lock the wall in place from moving. And we just use a uh, piece of 2 by 2 and just do a, a groove in the concrete footing. Now that the footings are set, we'll just get ready to put these forming boards in. What these do is uh, help us pour the concrete in, uh, much like a trough, which is going to hold our concrete in place and create our structure. Day five, looks like we're making a swimming pool. The guys did really good here on Friday, put up the foundation walls. So today we're going to attempt to uh, backfill this and start the framing. Everything is going according to plan. So, somebody get in the hole, and we'll start shoveling. I think it's going pretty good. You know, I'm extremely confident not only is this going to be built right, it's going to be damn good looking. Under the slab floor, we want to make sure we remove as much roots and any of the stumps as possible, because even under the floor, it can regenerate and start growing again. You don't want it growing up through the foundation or the slab floor. We were supposed to be eight inches above ground on the foundation. Really, we're 15 inches above ground. No big deal. I like the foundation wall up. We just shorten our walls to still get the same height, because we do not want to increase that height. There'd be a, a specific height in the area for how tall your garage can be, and we're at that height. But I, I don't mind this being tall, taller at all. I, I want to see this above ground. I don't want it just a couple inches above ground. Let's bring it up by code. It's supposed to be eight inches above ground. We're 15. I love building. This is why I'm a happy guy today. I'm not, not digging. I'm not tearing down things. I'm building. I like that. No more mistakes. We just do it the right way. Minimum code requirement is using OSB, which is oriented strand board. In this case, I prefer a much better wood, which is a plywood. It's not that I don't like OSB, but this is outside and it's going to be weathered. I like plywood. So we've gone upgrade a bit. It's a little more money, but I prefer it. And if you notice, we're using screws and not nails. Just my preference again. 
screws never move. We are uh, just doing all the rafters on the roof. We have a ridge beam here. It's a two by eight, two by six rafters, which tie in. Uh, we're gonna put a skylight in here. We're gonna put a skylight in here. And I'm not leaving until this is done. It's a circus here, isn't it? Now we got the roofers up here doing the roofing. You gotta love it. Sandy and doing the electrical. Well, we'll have the roof on today. 50 year fiberglass. Designer shingles. Beautiful. Unfortunately, it was about an inch and a half too high, so we took our jackhammer to it. Jackhammered it, it's no big deal. The rougher it is, the better the pad on top will get it. You can see the orange line on the wall, and we're gonna build it up with three-quarter crushed gravel. A minimum four-inch pad inside, five-inch pad on the outside. That's overkill, and we like it that way. We're nice and compact tight down here, and we're just waiting for the truck of stone. We got nice level here from board to board. It's good. Sir Steve, how are we doing today? Wrapping up the siding in the in the softness today. And I noticed you tuck tape all the joints. Way to go, even around the windows. Yeah, obviously, there's a seam at the window, so it only makes sense to tape the seam there as well. And a lot of guys, when they put this stuff on, all they'll do is they'll J around the, the receptacle box. It just gives a nice clean appearance, nice factory look. It uh, blends in with the look of the windows, uh, contrast and color and whatnot. Uh, so basically, we run our siding around, and then there's a cover plate that goes over top that cleans it all up. We've got uh, 12 tons of gravel, which is about 15 yards. Yeah, we got a little bit of work ahead of us here. We're going to saw cut the uh driveway here we're going to do it in three cuts to give us controlled cutting so when it does crack and concrete will crack and we have the winter hot and cold and that's what happens so we'd want to do controlled cuts okay i got about a quarter inch here and we'll hinge it and then we'll put tracks in probably about an hour and a half we'll be done nicely balanced See what happens when you bring pros in? This is excellent. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So now that the slabs are done, the driveway is done, we're just finishing the cleanup. Sean's going to come back in, insulate all the walls for an extra added look on the collar ties. We're going to box them in. And as you can see, the electrical is on each and every one of them. We're going to drop some puck lights in, and it's going to give it some nice character at nighttime. Let's go take a look at this. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm excited. Good, good. Let's look at the front first. Oh, okay. I really love the driveway. This was an extra added bonus. This is beautiful. I like the color very much. We uh, did a controlled cut all across the driveway, and we tried to keep it in the eight-foot mark. You know, a job like this uh, was an awful lot of work and, and a lot of headaches, I'll tell you. Oh, look at the window, Mike. I really it like that. It follows the line of the, the roof. It does, doesn't it? <gasps> The contractor stated over and over again, I have the permit. Don't worry about the permit. The permit's coming. I have the permit. Over and over again. Meanwhile, he had no permit. Oh, the light. Oh, my goodness. It looks fantastic. You should not let your contractor start the job unless he has the permit in the window. Hi, Sean. Oh, my It's so nice. The light. Had he have gotten a permit, he never would have been allowed in the first place to build it the way he did. <gasps> Look, Mike, the detailing on the edge matches the beam. I like this look. This is, see the little puck lights in there? Yes, 
It's beautiful. Oh my goodness, and look, the sun's coming in. This whole thing could have been avoided if you had the permit. I have a remote control here. Oh, come on. I like this, look at that. Look oh at that. Oh my goodness. Isn't that something? I can't believe it. What I really like about this is that if it rains, you forgot to close this, yeah. it will automatically close on their own. Come on. It has a sense You're of You're kidding. No, that is just Is he pulling my leg? No, no. There's no doubt in my mind that Jill could have been taken for an awful lot more money. Uh, she was smart enough to pay in milestones and installments. Very cautious, very careful, and even when a neighbor of hers came over to say, Jill, I don't think something's right here, she put a stop payment on the check and called the man back in again. Thank you so much. You oh, are this is wonderful. You Thank are you. So welcome. And you worked so hard. Oh no, it was, it was my pleasure. Oh, it's a lot of fun. You guys are wonderful. It is just beautiful. Most people out there don't know what good work is. Go talk to someone who does. Go talk to a neighbor who might be an architect or an engineer. Go find somebody, ask some questions. You have to educate yourself. You do not want to get caught in this trap. Well, you're going to be missed here and in the neighborhood. It's got quite a wouldn't mind if we stop in for coffee every once in a while. No, that would be, that would be nice. great. I'd like, yeah. to come I'd back like you to come back when... I'd like to see this time. Yes, good. Absolutely, that's a deal. after the flooring, we'll come okay, back and have a party. Okay, that's a deal? Right okay. on, thanks very much. Come back for a glass of wine and... Oh, I like that. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Okay. Okay, Jill, keep smiling. But check him out. Go look at the work. So he does a little few things in the basement. Is he good enough to do a garage? Ask him, have you done a garage? Have you done anything like this? And if you have, let me know where it is so I can go see it. Well done. Good job, Mike. Good game, Mikey. Right on, buddy. See you tomorrow. Ready?